Hello again. It's been a while, but I am Silent K, and this is Shadowverse. It's been a while since I last posted a video. Uh, work has been keeping me kind of busy and tired. But this game just came out, and I started playing it, so I figured I'd record a bit of it. It plays a lot like Hearthstone, except it takes out weapons and secrets, and includes new mechanics like evolving your cards and... It has amulets, which sit on the board like a minion, but they affect things in different ways and you can't attack with them. Uh, so far I'm liking it, but I'm kind of skeptical about the free-to-play model, because it uses vials, much like Hearthstone uses dust, to create new cards, but the crafting costs are double what they are in Hearthstone. Instead of, uh, was it 4100? 400 and 1600 for crafting costs, it's... 50, 200, 800, and 3,500 to craft a legendary in this game. Plus the decks are 40 cards each, which means to make a consistent deck you're going to have to craft a lot of cards, which right now the library of cards to choose from is pretty small, but as a free player you're going to be crafting a lot of cards to make a consistent deck, and <clears throat> that's going to be difficult with the crafting cards. When you first start out the game though, it throws a lot of freebies at you, a lot of free packs, a lot of free gold, so you can get the ball rolling early, but I'm still kind of skeptical about the long-term viability of being completely free to play. <clears throat> anyway, let's jump in and play some matches. So far I've been doing really well with this game. I've lost like two matches maybe out of like 15, so I'm doing pretty well for myself. Let's take a look at my decks. Right now I have two decks. It uses a class-based system like Hearthstone with neutral cards and class cards. This is my Forest Craft deck. Which plays a lot like Hearthstone's Paladin or Rogue. You play a lot of small 1-1s and the more cards you play, the more effects you unlock, kind of like combo. For rogue. So, uh, you got a lot of cards like this that put fairies into your hand. Fairies are just 1 1 creatures for 1 mana. And that unlocks certain abilities like Archer, which is like Knife Juggler. Whenever you play a minion, it throws 1 random damage out. I like to call that one the Arrow Juggler. We got Tam Lin, gain plus one plus one for each other card play this turn. Which is like a mini Van Cleef. We got Okami, which buffs plus one attack for each minion that comes into play. Pedal Fencer, which turns all fairies played into more Pedal Fencers, which can start snowballing. And for the end game, I have some big cards like discard your hand and gain plus one plus one for each discarded card. Forest Archelon, which if you played two other cards this turn, it will freeze the enemy's board. And Forest Giant, deal damage equal to the number of cards in your hand. So it's basically a board flood deck with some uh, benefits for flooding the board. But taking a closer look, we got Water Fairy. Last words, which is Death Rattle. Put a fairy into your hand. Elf Child May. Deal one damage to a random enemy. Fairy Child is spelled. There's very few spells in this game, so you won't see many of those. One mana. Put two fairies in your hand. Well of Destiny, which is one of the amulets I was talking about. Two mana. It sits on the board, and at the start of your turn, give plus one, plus one to a random follower. Fairy Whisper, 2 mana 1 1, put 2 fairies into your hand. Fanfare is like Battle Cry. Sylvan Justice, another spell, deal 2 damage to an enemy follower and put a fairy in your hand. Dark Elf, this gets a fairy every time it attacks. You'll notice the stats aren't that great, but across the board they're slightly worse than Hearthstone, so it all evens out. These are all pretty decent cards for the game. Archer, like I said before, deals one random damage for each card that comes into play, each minion that comes into play. 
Waltzing Fairy, Battle Cry, and Death Rattle put a fairy in your hand. Tam Lin, already mentioned. Elemental Lance. This is the only other spell in the deck. Deal 3 damage to an enemy follower, or if you've played 2 other cards, deal 6 damage. 6 damage for 3 mana is really good. Okami gains plus 1 for each allied minion that comes into play. 3 4 4 isn't bad. Elven Priest Mage. This one you have to evolve, which I mentioned the evolve mechanic earlier. I'll describe it a little better once we get in game. Put two fairies into your hand and change the cost to zero, which is very important for some of the endgame minions, like Forest Detchalon. If you have to play those two fairies, it's going to cost you nine mana total, but if you have those zero cost fairies, then you can play those on turn seven instead of turn nine. Very useful. Petal Fencer, like I said before, it turns all fairies played into more Petal Fencers. So you play this and then like maybe one or two more fairies. And then you can just keep playing your fairies as 2-2 Petal Fencers, as long as your opponent can't clear them all. Triant is probably the weakest card in this deck, but I just needed a filler card. Gain plus 2, plus 2 if at least two other cards were played this turn. So it's basically just a 4-4 for four, 5 mana, unless you want to spend the fairies on it, which you typically don't. Because there are better things to do with them. Elf Prophetess. Ward, which is Taunt, they have to attack this first. 4-5 for five, 5. Fanfare, return an allied follower amulet to your hand, which is kind of good, because the board space in this is uh, 5 slots, so your board can get pretty crowded, especially when you're playing a lot of 1-1 one, one fairies. <coughs> but this is again one of the weaker cards in the deck. But I don't have very many good 5s to put in here, so... Gotta fill it out. Fill out the curve. Angel Crusher. 6-6 six, six for 6. It gains plus 1, plus 1 for each discarded card after discarding your hand. Which, if your opponent is having a hard time dealing with big minions, this can end the game very quickly. For a Cetulon, as I mentioned before, if you play two other cards, it'll freeze the opponent's board. And Forest Giant, which I mentioned before, deal X damage to and enemy follower, where x equals the number of cards in your hand. So this is the first deck I made, and I put the most uh, vials into it, crafting cards for it. And it's the deck I played the most of, so I have the most experience with. So we'll take that one into the game, and maybe I'll show you the Swordcraft deck later. This game does have a problem with crashing though. It crashes fairly often. I've played it for maybe six hours total between today and yesterday and it has crashed in game probably like 10 times so you do have to put up with that but it's a pretty the fun game angry. stand back i have this covered all right well of destiny isn't actually a bad play early on because a lot of these decks play fairly slowly but i think i'm gonna throw it out since i have nothing else to play and Archer is usually a combo card, so you want those ones and twos. And I got another Will of Destiny anyway, which I'll probably just play for the sake of it. Alright, so you can evolve in four turns. This is your evolve counter. And first player gets two evolve points, second player gets three evolve points, and that's how they balance it out between going first and second. So once you have the chance to evolve, you'll see each card has each card has an evolved form with different stats. 2-3 is the normal card and 4-5 uh, is the evolved form. And when you evolve a card, let's see, maybe I should just play Will of Destiny here. 
Uh, two, three, four. Or I can play two, three, four. Uh, we'll get the water fairy out there. So in addition to getting better stats for evolving, the minion also gains charge, but only for other minions. You can't attack face with it. At your service. So there's a lot of strategy in deciding when to evolve and how to use your evolved minion. Mm. <coughs> so we can play the Dark Elf, which gets us more fairies if it attacks, or Waltzing Fairy, which gives us automatic fairies. Uh, Charmed. Yes, indeed. I think I'll just play the Waltzing Fairy. Yeah. I'll teach you all the steps. Sort of 50 50 between. Which one play here? So As you see, we're already starting to fill our hand with cheap fairies. To our no one brother. Ones. The Swordcraft class service. plays a lot Let's speed like up. Paladin, too, with a flood on the board with Ow. multiple cheap minions. Ah. Alrighty. We got an archer, but we only got fuel for one shot with it. So we'll probably play something else for the time being. And then we'll just use the archer later. Mm hmm. We'll probably use the dark elf just to get some more fuel out there. The forest abandoned me. Hey, let's play! Dance with me! Should have been quicker. Then next turn we'll probably have the archer and two fairies to start pinging down these one ones if there's any left. Raise your blade. You are done for. And that's the evolved mechanic. You see, she turned it into a five-five, which gains charge, but it can only attack other minions. Better than in the cradle. Oh, come on! Party's over. Alrighty. <clears throat> so Archer is not bad here, especially since we can evolve it into a 4-4. We could clear the board if we wanted to, or at least make sure it trades. The archer play. Charmed. The forest is with me. Hey, let's play. Hey, let's play. Damn you. Well, I think we'll just charge down the one one. You're done for. Kind of not in the best spot here, but forest folks stick together. Pew, let's pew. see what we can do. So this is my end. Conflict is everything. I act at my heart's command. Ow! Oh, that's not bad. That was a good trade for me. It won't be long now. I need my deal to damage card. Not that one. Hmm. Let's see. Let's 
Let's see. Okami will survive hitting the fort too. But I don't have anything to combo with it. Not that I need to this turn. This will survive as well, plus it gives me a fairy. And then I can combo it with another dark elf, and then we can start filling our hand with fairies, or we can just play the fairy in a well of destiny. That would be a pretty good idea. Charmed. Charmed. The forest abandoned me. Alright. It won't be long now. I walk my own path. Just don't. So we could save the fairy to combo with something like Tam Lin, but I think with the Well of Destiny out, it's better to have more stuff that can get buffed. So. We shall do that. I should mention that when you evolve a minion that you just play, it can only attack minions, but if your minion is ready to attack face, is if your minion's already ready to attack and you evolve it, then you can attack face with it. Than in the cradle. So it's like a, an always ready buff. So sometimes it's useful to save on evolve for like a late game finish. Let's see. Probably just play Okami and Dark Elf. This will give it a buff as well. So. Played in this order. And our opponent is down to one card, which is good for us because her class is pretty combo centric as well. She needs to play the, the officers and the commanders in conjunction. Step forward, always step on. <clears throat> ah, I should have buffed one of my two attack ones so I could kill this 3 3. But well, we got Sylvan Justice, which is good. So probably Sylvan Justice, trade, play the fairy, play Tamlin. That works. Gets us a fairy. We trade in our fairy. We play our fairy. We get another fairy. And we could play this to buff Tamlin, but Remember, board space is five minions, so. Tread not in these woods. And this buffs Okami, so. They're doing pretty well right now. Whirling ah! into action. Take my blade of resentment. Ah, Okami. It all ends here. She is our last evolve point Body. to like kill the 4-4, four four, no doubt. Home. Alright. <clears throat> so we will probably elemental lance the 7-1 and kill the 3-1 with our 3-4. And that will give us two fairies. And we can play everything for another Tamlin. Right? Yeah, this only attacks followers, so we can't use it on face. We'll pop that down. This is nothing. Just don't. And we can't actually play both fairies because we'd run out of room. So we'll just play one. Good enough. Tread not in these woods. And that's it. Time for target practice. Yeah. Be gone. No, we're just dead. Yeah. Uh, An exemplary wait. battle. Easy peasy. And it seems our opponent disconnected right at the very end, so we'll just jump cut to the match results.
And we're back. Your opponent is connected. I did it. I won. Rank up. And the game does have missions, which are like daily quests, much like Hearthstone has. And there are also achievements, which grant you little prizes too. I'll show you those real quick. If you have missions here, these here. This is the way a daily mission show up, and you also have long-term achievements, which can be completed any time, which I just completed achieved D1. Which I just completed achieved D1 rank for 100 rupees, which is enough to get a pack of cards, which isn't bad. And since I'm here, I might as well show you the card shop. You can buy them with tickets, which are handed out for like quests and whatnot. Rupees, which is gold, and crystals, which is the cash shop money. Contrary to Hearthstone's card packs, you get 8 per pack, and it seems the odds of getting the better cards are higher than Hearthstone's. I've already gotten like 5 or 6 legendaries, and a bunch of epics which are called gold in this game. They have bronze, silver, golden, legendary. I could just got a gold there and a whole bunch of silvers. Navy Lieutenant, I already have. Dual Hand, Shadowcraft, Swordsman, I have a few of those. Silver Bolt, I don't really get this card. It's very high cost. Draw a card, then deal X damage to an enemy. X equals the number of cards in your hand. Seems pretty bad. There are also animated cards, which are like <coughs> Hearthstone's gold versions. But in this game you can't craft animated cards, you can only open them. Petrification... Moonblade Summoner. Spell boost, gain plus one plus one for each spell boost, so... Like in this game a 3-3 would be like on par, so you would have to spell boost this thing. Like at least three times to be above par. Seems pretty unlikely. <clears throat> Demonic Strike, deal 3 damage. This game also has uh, neutral spells, so if you crafted this or opened it, you could use it for any deck. But 3 damage for 4 mana, not all that great. Demonic Sniper, aka Magma Rager, almost set. Not very good pack. Let's jump back in, play another game real quick. Stick with Pile of Pixies. And if you ever notice this animation freeze up, that means you have crashed. As long as it's still animating though, it might still be connecting. Although sometimes your opponent is having trouble connecting, so it takes a while, so... It's... It takes some patience. Time for me to prove myself! You must and die! And we're against Swordcraft again. Keep the Fairy Whisperer. Archer we could keep, but this deck has a lot of one drops and two drops, so we'll try for something a little better. There we go. One and two. Lots of fairy giving cards as well. One, two, three. Nice. We'll just stick to the curve. We'll be able to catch up later. You wouldn't. Each class also has its own little counter here. The cards is how many cards you have in hand, and like for Forest Craft, it'll tell you how many cards you played per turn. And Swordcraft, it just tells you what traits each one is. Soldiers or, uh, or not soldiers, was officers. Yeah, officers and commanders. It's pretty helpful. I don't know why I went face there. He could have had a free trade on a 1 1, but whatever. So, we could play a Well of Destiny and a Fairy, or we could just play the, the uh, Dark Elf. We'll do that, just so we get a good trade out of it. 
the forest abandoned me. Straight away! My conviction does not waver. Help me, fairies! Look at this face again. He's gonna lose his one two for free. Which is good for me. I doubt I'll make that same mistake twice. Swordcraft is not a face deck. You need to keep minions on the board so that they buff each other and work off each other. So going face, not a good idea. Let's see, we got Sylvan Justice, we'll be playing that this turn. Probably a well too. Yeah, that's for it. There we go. Easy peasy. Board control, my friends. Board control. No! And hand size is also eight cards in this, so you gotta be careful about how many fairies you put into it. Help me, fairies. Let's see, we got the elf uh, prophetess next turn if we want to return something. Which we could return this for more. Uh, more fairies. I might do that. We'll see what he does Raise first. Your blade. You are done for. Now see, if he kept some stuff on the board, he could have given one of his I officers plus all. two plus zero, but Better than in the cradle. he did not control the board. Alright. So... <clears throat> we could play the Prophetess and then evolve it. Or we could just start dumping hand <coughs> and then evolve something else. We'll probably do that. Yeah, 3 1 1. Don't hurt me! Hey, let's play! You're done for! Bad people are evil, stay away! The order will remain. Teach you all the stuff. Help me, fairies. You wouldn't. <clears throat> now we just need a card that benefits from playing a lot of cheap cards. One of those endgame cards would be nice by now. Let's speed things up. My ally is justice. And if he kills the 2 2 with Death Rattle, I'm gonna burn a card. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, he killed the wrong one. I'm gonna rest for a bit. Ah, that would have been fine to burn, anyways. So we can play a fairy and an elf prophetess. Or we can just start dumping hand. This is going to put two cards in my hand, and this is going to put one card in my hand, so... Not all that useful. Yeah. My I think I'll just play a bunch of fairies. Hey, let's play. Hey, my hand let's size play. is getting a little too big. Example of why I want to keep stuff on the board. This commander gives taunt to all the officers on the board. It won't be long now. But without any officers, you can't give anything taunt. Voice the flag. Heart over. Elf child may. We'll just return this. Pirate scum. What is this? Four five with ward. Yeah, 
We'll get this out. My duty is to protect. And put another fairy out, maybe. This game does have a couple board wipes, but not all that many, so... It's not likely they can deal with a lot of stuff, but... This... Oh no, that's not the one I was thinking of. I should have foreseen this! Whoa! And concede. Easy game. I won. Well, before I go, I'll do a rundown of the classes real quick. Because we only saw some of them. Let's see. So if we go to build a deck. So we got seven classes. We got Arisa with Force Craft. Puts a lot of low cost fairies in your hand, and you can use that to unlock other abilities. Most of the cards being if you played two cards previously this turn, do something something. We got Erica with Swordcraft. This class has a lot of summons. There are a lot of Officers that summon duplicates themselves, so you get like 2-1-1s, 2-2-2s, things like that. And the officers and commanders can buff each other, although the synergy isn't very strong right now, so... It's kind of awkward to play, like you saw when I had a commander that gives plus one plus one to an officer, and an officer that gains plus one plus one if you have a commander and stuff like that, which makes it kind of awkward, but it's not a bad class. Isabel with Runecraft. This is the mage archetype. <coughs> you play cards that give spell boost, and then cards with spell boost will get strengthened by playing spell boost. And sometimes that means making a damage spell do more damage, or it can increase the stats of a summon or something like that. I haven't seen this class played much, so I can't really comment on it very well, but. We have Rowan with Dragoncraft, which is like the druid class in Hearthstone. It does mono ramping and has a lot of big endgame stuff. We have Luna with Shadowcraft, which uh, gains necromancy points when things die. And you can use those points for effects like strengthening spells or summoning extra creatures and whatnot. We have Urius with Bloodcraft. This is like Warlock in Hearthstone, where you deal a lot of damage to yourself. And once you enter Vengeance, which means you have 10 or less health, your cards gain benefits. We have Eris with Havencraft. This class uses a lot of uh, countdown amulets, which, unlike the other amulets, which provide a continuing effect on the board, countdown amulets have an effect after they're destroyed and each one has a countdown on it for how many turns before it will be destroyed and there are other cards that can reduce the countdown on those amulets. This is another class I don't know much about but I have looked at some of the cards and they do seem pretty cool. It's very slow but you do summon powerful stuff from the amulets so it's something I'd like to check out. Alright, well I think that's about it. Played a few games, showed you a few decks. I'll try to record some more of this in the future, though I'm mainly playing this on my phone where I can't record it, so we'll see. So, I'll catch you all later. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment if you feel so inclined, and have a great day.